So there, there was all of that information, the, um, the information on the spacecraft, on the astronauts. But one of the, the things that I think a lot of Australians aren't aware of is that Honeysuckle Creek tracking station captured the first pictures, those historic images of Neil Armstrong walking off the lunar module and onto the moon. How did this small tracking station outside of Canberra end up capturing this vital moment in human history? Well, we were rather proud of the fact that that is the case. The most requested news clip of all time came from here in the ACT uh, from the Honeysuckle Creek station. Uh, how did we end up doing it? Well, there was a whole lot of factors, and I won't bore you with all the details, but uh, basically there had to be problems elsewhere, which there was, and uh, in the end, it all came down to us, didn't well, it? Well, Neil, Neil Armstrong changed the flight plan by wanting to come out first before, um, before they had a sleep period, and so that changed all the plans that we carefully arranged beforehand, and that's the case where the, the park's antenna wasn't quite seeing the spacecraft properly. And um, as there were problems elsewhere, we ended up being the only station that was actually tracking and getting the, a, a reasonable picture at the time. Because there are various stories and, and versions of what happened and the, the park's dish has, has received a lot of the, the credit, so to speak, but really the first pictures, the images that went around Australia and around the world came from your tracking station. That's quite correct. Um, we're, we're, we're proud of that. And um, I'm afraid the... Uh, what was it like the movie you saw that... those images okay. of Neil Armstrong walking down the steps? Well, I didn't probably even watch it, to be honest. I, I, I might have just seen it out of the corner of my eye. We had, we had a monitor on the console there, but uh, really we were just so busy uh, making sure that uh, things were going properly and, and not... Uh, Making to, sure we didn't screw up. <laughs> well, you have to remember that the important data was not the, the, the video. The, the picture was not the important data from our point of view. The engineering data and the medical data and the navigation data and the voice, that was the important one from our point of view. But the legacy is the image. The legacy is the image, that's right. So it, it, it was almost a bit of a fluke in some respects. I think it was even one stage where they weren't going to have television on board. Oh, it, it, it was definitely an afterthought. There was a, a lot of opposition by the astronaut corps and other people not to have television. It was a distraction. Uh, it was a real distraction for their job. And uh, it was only through uh, a lot of argument that they ended up actually uh, putting television on board. When we saw it, when, when they first came over the horizon, they were getting ready to go through the hatch. Uh, that was one of the few contingencies that occurred from our point of view on Apollo 11 was the fact that uh, this was the first time we'd ever seen anybody actually run through the checklist of communications between the two astronauts in their suits and the lunar module and the command module and all the other aspects of that. It was the first time it ever been done altogether. And um, I only saw the checklist that the astronauts had for the first time a couple of days ago. And uh, they didn't follow it. And we were... Uh, it was, it was quite chaotic for a little while while they were doing the communications checks before they got out onto the lunar surface. But it, you know, it all happened. Does it frustrate you that the parks dish has got all the, the you know, all the attention and, and, right. and accolade for Australia's role when really it was your dish that achieved it? Well, the roles were somewhat reversed from the movie version in that... Uh, Honeysuckle was the centre of uh, mission operations for Apollo in the Southern Hemisphere and parks were brought up specifically to help with the lunar surface activities for Apollo 11. They were only going to uh, help us out for one mission originally. So it's used a bit of poetic license, Hamish, the, the film? Oh, well, uh, I'm not sure what their goal was, but uh, yes. Uh, they, they admit that it was a, it's, a fic it's a fictional account based on truth. But it does alter people's perception of history. This, this was our argument. We, we, we really, I love the movie. I thought it was great. Great little uh, nostalgia for the 60s, music and everything else was terrific. But it does alter people's perception of history. And uh, that's what concerned us. See, Parks did come up seven minutes later and then they carried the rest of the, 
a EVA the walk uh, with the best quality available uh, to the end. They did carry that. They had a much bigger antenna than mm. we had, and no nominally they would have uh, they would have supported the entire walk on the moon, and either themselves or Goldstone in in California would have carried those first pictures of Armstrong. But due to a, a whole variety of uh, contingencies, there were four altogether. The planets being aligned. <laughs> the planets were aligned in favour of honeysuckle. Yes. Stay with us after the break on this special edition of Agenda as we share more of the recollections of Hamish Lindsay and John Saxon on that historic moon landing 40 years ago.